Hello everyone, it's Oliver here and welcome to a new Laserdisc update video. I've not produced one for about four months, but at the end of the last video I did say I was after Akira, the uh, special Japanese box set which I did acquire recently thanks to a friend of mine and didn't have to pay too much for it. But I've got about eight movies here to show you all. Some are kind of collectible, some are just kind of just random pickups I saw on eBay going for a good price. So first, let's kick it off with... Never say never again. Cover's kind of okay. It's not amazing, but it's kind of better than... I suppose better than the Blu-ray release, uh, which is prone to disc rot. Uh, after I'd reviewed the movie, my disc had, like, skipping problems. And uh, after a friend of mine had, on YouTube, had done this sort, sort of a, a list of all the defective kind of DVDs and Blu-rays, and Never Say Never Again was on there. And obviously it's out of print now, so um, I saw this going for like five pounds, maybe less actually. It's got some old stickers on there which I can't really remove. It's all grubby stickers that are really difficult to remove and take off, right? So on the back we've got obviously chapter stops, widescreen release, comes with a, a theatrical trailer, and the sound on this was far better than the actual Blu-ray, which is kind of remastered into a 5.1 DTS mix. Is obviously a PCM Dolby Surround, essentially Dolby Stereo, right? Uh, from back in the day, the original sound mix for the movie. Uh, it sounded really good as soon as the music kicks in. It's like really good sort of. Didn't, it's not really separation, but just felt like it, if, like it, it made use of all the all the speakers. And obviously, I've I've done some capture of the footage of all these laser discs, so you can see on screen the quality of the transfer, which is actually pretty competent. It's actually nicely done. Um, it didn't look too bad actually. So I mean, the film kind of doesn't have a like a color palette, which is really like like it pops. It's very kind of natural design. Uh, on purpose. But yeah, I was quite, you know, happy to see this. I don't mind this film. I think it's better than Thunderball. Uh, some of my friends would disagree with that. But uh, yeah, I only reviewed this film I mean, about a month ago or so. And um, yeah, it's not as bad as I was kind of led to believe and what I saw when I was younger. But uh, it's got problems, of course. But yeah, it's nice to have this in the collection. Next up, we have Street Smart, uh, the Christopher Reeve movie starring Morgan Freeman, who I think was nominated for an Academy Award for this for his performance. Christopher Reeve was largely ignored. On the Laserdisc database, this is the only version of Street Smart on Laserdisc. There's no PAL release. There's no listings for a Japanese one, which is very bizarre to me because they all often put everything out in Japan. It's got the classic kind of image design from back in the day where it's like, you know, the VHS, VHS cover with you know sort of lays this kind of design and it's got cd video which is kind of like when philips were trying to push out um kind of rebranding laserdisc um during that period uh, on the back we've got kind of a really empty gray piece here and obviously mentions a little bit about the plot christopher reeve from superman one to four and death trap um also this was the movie that christopher reeve made basically to do superman four christopher reeve was really interested in producing this script into a movie Canon Films would only finance it if he would return as Superman. Uh, unfortunately, this film bombed, as is so does Superman 4. So Christopher Reeve's, you know, short career with Canon Films did a lot of damage to him, um, unfortunately. This lace disc does have laser rot. Um, I checked the database before purchasing it, and it said possible candidate. And yeah, unfortunately, it's got laser rot. So it's a bit of a shame, but it's pan scan release. It literally peanuts just cost, so I didn't really care. I mean, I don't mind the cover actually so chris reeve there who is kind of superman hair style uh it's a good film it's worth seeking out i did review it a number of years back on my channel and uh, most people haven't really heard of it any sort of people that were familiar with canon films and chris's career but yeah it's worth seeking out if you can find it on streaming the blu-ray's out of print um but it must be on like prime or something like that because it's an mgm film well mgm own a lot of the canon back catalog so as Amazon acquired it, it should be on there, but if not, then there are other means to find this movie. Next up, we have The Arrival. I have been searching for this film, or this box set in particular, for a number of years. I've seen this film before, I didn't particularly love it, I thought it was kind of okay. Directed by David Toohey, who went on to do the Riddick films, and he did a, had his own stab at the Alien 3 script a while back, before um, Vincent Ward would do his take on it, and then David Fincher and so forth. Um, so this is from 1996, starring Charlie Sheen, um, science fiction movie about kind of picks up a signal and he thinks there's aliens out there, or of course they are, and they're actually on Earth. I don't recall much of it, I remember it feeling like a bit of like a TV movie, uh, the CGI effects are pretty bad in the film, I mean, at the time they were probably 
seems quite good but um yeah the effects are a bit ropey i think the an, an alternative movie similar to this i suppose in some way is fire in the sky which is supposed to be quite a scary film um i've never seen it my friends have recommended it to me many times um this box set comes with um i think it's also a lot of this stuff was ported over i believe to the dvd and so forth so you've got a commentary track documentaries Dog Digital 5.1, it's in widescreen, comes with a trailer and so forth. So you get kind of like a, a decent kind of box set uh, from Pioneer themselves. They published this. Um, so yeah, again, you, there should be some footage on screen you can see. And inside the box, you get a booklet. As you can see here. Um, that gives you information, basically like kind of a write-up of the movie. Um, and what David Thierry wanted to do with the film and so forth. So yeah. Quite a little, nice little set. Strangely, the uh, laser disc sleeves come with Ken Crane's laser discs. Now, obviously, Ken Crane's was a store in America that sold laser discs. Um, lasted, well, I was, they were selling laser discs till the late 90s, and they kind of moved over to DVD. But I remember purchasing in 1999 from eBay. Uh, that was actually from the Ken Crane's website, Superman 3, the widescreen release. So I was like, that kind of like fast bit of nostalgia there. For me in some little way because i never shopped there i never i was never in america but it's kind of cool to see that ken crane sleeves it actually is the only disc i've got in my collection that actually has a sleeve by well advertising ken cranes next up we have the criterion release of the killer look at that cover now that's incredible i saw this on ebay a uk seller uh, the price was a bit too much for me uh, so i kept my eye on it and then the seller kind of reduced it in price over the coming weeks and I thought, right, well, I'll have that now. <laughs> so I've seen bits of this film uh, years back, but I've never seen it all the way through. Uh, the transfer of this is surprisingly good. Uh, the, the downside is that the print they used is very dusty. You can see visible, visible splices as I cut the film together. So it's not a clean print, but the transfer is very good of this dusty print, basically. The sound's in mono, from what I kind of gathered. It's got subtitles. Um, comes with commentary by John Wu and a bunch of extras which are mostly kind of like text based you sort of step forward through stuff but it weirdly has a behind the scenes footage on Hard Target um, which will also find itself I think maybe the same footage or something different on the Hard Boiled release by Criterion so I was really happy to see this behind the scenes stuff because it's not on the 4K release it was never on the Blu-ray so I will I ripped some of it but I will rip it properly at some point with the sound so I did it I did all the footage I grabbed I just did via just a picture so we all saw what I needed but I will post that hard target stuff on social media. This is a trifold release, so pretty epic design. It's quite heavy actually, with like three discs in it, but yeah, very cool stuff. Um, other bits and bobs it comes with, like additional kind of short stuff as well, short movies I believe on here. Um, a lot of it is kind of text-based though, and some of it comes with trailers, so it's not like you're getting loads of behind the scenes stuff in terms of like visual elements, it's more like text-based medium. Um, but yeah, I was very happy with the quality of this, despite the dusty print and so forth. But just that cover, it's just incredible. Um, but yeah, very happy to get hold of this. I'm very picky about what I own on Criterion. Um, Lace's stuff was to better days for them, I think. They are a bit more flexible with their choices. Now it's very... They seem to be quite stubborn now with their, with their choices. I'm like, the odd one comes through, I'm like, oh, I'll definitely buy that. But often the case, I'm like, I don't think I'd want to own that on Criterion. I want something a little bit more somewhat a bit more commercial you know what i mean but yeah very good release and as mentioned earlier i now have the akira special collection box set from japan this has always been troublesome to get hold of because you see it on like the japanese auctions it starts out at a very cheap price and then you sort of always get bid out outbid at the last minute and it becomes a little bit too expensive thankfully there was one to buy like a buy option which kind of had a reasonable price to it and i grabbed it edition wise it's not Perfect edition is a bit scuffed at the top here and on the back it's a bit like beaten up but I thought well, it's like it's good enough it's still got the OB strip on the on the front right it's got three discs all in CAV it's got a booklet with notes from James Cameron Mobius uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky it's crazy right um, but their notes are in French and James is in English this comes with like a bunch of trailers comes with an interview with the director the storyboard breakdowns a lot more stuff is on this than has ever been on, on any Akira release I've stumbled across. I had the, the PAL DVD years back, um, which had a few bits and bobs on it. And then the 4K release is kind of bare bones. There isn't much to it at all. And this is like the only way to sort of get additional stuff. I don't think it's as meaty as the um, 
Ghost in the Shell one, but it is a, a nice set. But the picture transfer, which you can probably see on, on, on screen, it's like, it's a little bit softer in areas than I was expecting. It is a, an earlier release compared to the Ghost in the Shell one. Um, but I mean, it's fine. I mean, it sounds really nice as well. And, um, and there's always an ad with animation on Laserdisc. It always looks pretty good anyway. Each sleeve comes like a little cool design as well um, on the front. On the back, it tells you sort of chapter stops. It was also all in Japanese. I will probably rip some of this footage from these laser discs and put them up online somewhere. Maybe on my Patreon um, for those who love Japanese animation and uh, can probably understand Japanese. But yeah, it's nice to sort of finally have this in somewhat of a decent, decent condition. The discs are fine, just that the cover's a bit beaten up. Um, but yeah, finally, we have three movies which are part of a trilogy. Uh, most people grab a laser disc player for certain movies, and you can probably guess what they are. Uh, they are the Star Wars films. So we have the Japanese special collection. Um, these are the first time, I believe, they were released in widescreen on laser disc format in 1985. I believe 86 on the back here, sorry. These transfers were released before George Lucas did the old THX kind of remaster with them in the early 90s. We should use a little bit too much noise reduction. Uh, and the colours are a little bit different. This is these colours are really, really pop on screen. And very nice transfers. I was very surprised by this. Um, very warm image as well. They did release these in America. I think this is, these these transfers were part of the sort of shrinking aspect ratio problem that some other laser disc uh, fans have done videos on, where you you lose a little a certain percentage of the picture by the end. I don't know why that happened, but the issue was corrected with another release of Star Wars before the THX kind of ones came out. But um, this was uh, from eBay in the UK for like £20. I thought that's a pretty good deal for this one. Um, comes Weirdly comes with English on the back. Um, most Japanese discs would have this text in Japanese. Um, we'll see, widescreen obviously. The picture is at the top of the screen, the widescreen images, and at the bottom you've got subtitles. So if you blow up on a big TV, you've got the picture right at the top, and then you have to sort of move it down with, depending on your TV will allow you to do that. So mine does, thankfully, but some of my friends have like a Samsung TV. You play old media through it and they won't let you change anything, the aspect ratio and so forth. So um, mine's a Panasonic, so it's you know, very handy to do that. Star Wars has a booklet inside, all in Japanese. Some nice little photos in there. Tell you about the special effects as well. So it gives you a little bit of production information on the film. Uh, transfer on that was really nice. No extras, no trailer or anything like that. Just a widescreen movie and CAV, so half an hour per side. Up next is The Empire Strikes Back. Again, very good transfer for the time, especially. Obviously a little bit different to the THX remasters. Um, again, English on the back. No extra material from what I from what I remember. Um, we can often ch check, actually. Check the last disc, and it will tell you what it has at the, at the end. Yeah, size five, because it's got five sides this takes up, and no extra on the end but um includes a information sleeve very much like star wars would do so you got the information about the movie inside this little booklet again i can't read this so, <laughs> so i think they all come with a booklet as well and finally we have return of the jedi love this cover it's one of my favorites for, for return of the jedi the cover for Empire Strikes Back, I always grew up with the PAL kind of VHS release of it, the first one, uh, where it's got Darth Vader very prominent on the cover. Uh, I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like. Um, but that's my favourite one. This one does come with a special feature, and it basically shows you the difference between a pan and scan and a widescreen version of Star Wars. So you can see on screen, uh, I've captured that, how they've done it. So it gives you a little bit of information, you know, to tell the viewer what you're kind of missing with pan and scan. Uh, so yeah, very happy to have these. Return of the Jedi and Empire Strikes Back were a little bit more pricey than Star Wars. Um, but again, if I go on the Japanese auctions, they're all, they're always listed cheap. But, you know, once you bid, you always get outbid and it goes with too much. Or someone will just list them like, if you want the trilogy, it's too much. Someone wanted like 20,000 yen for the trilogy. Um, and then I send, sometimes send them separately. But this, this guy on eBay UK was kind of selling them for a reasonable price. I thought, fuck it, I'll, I'll just get them. You know, instead of, you know, again, placing a bid on Japanese auction. If you win, then you've got to pay the fees and then the postage. So it pretty totals up to the amount I actually purchased them for separately. 
so yeah it kind of worked out in the end so yeah i don't need to collect any more star wars stuff on laser disc i've got these now the japanese original widescreen pressings I've got the thx definitive box set from the early 90s and then i've got the 97 edition the special edition so no more star wars uh, um i think i'm done so yeah i'm good to have it's good to have these finally um and akira as well oh so yeah that's the end of my kind of update video. I don't think there's anything else more coming that I've seen. I mean, there may be the odd thing I'll pick up next few months, but I doubt it will be eight or so titles. You know, it'll probably be less than that, so I'll probably wait maybe a, a bit longer till I've built up enough titles to sort of show you. I'm kind of running out of space as well. So um, it's often the case I go through my discs and, you know, if I don't want anything anymore, I'll just give it to my friend is also a fellow collector so i'd rather give it to someone who's going to appreciate it more than me um but yeah well i hope you enjoyed watching that if you have any questions about the format or any particular release i've shown you let me know in the comments and i'll try to respond as soon as i can okay folks take care of yourselves and goodbye for now i hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to click the like button and hit the bell to be notified of my latest reviews big thanks to my patrons and youtube members for supporting the channel if you want to get involved and gain access to exclusive videos and take part in q a's follow the link below